This story starts in Kazakhstan, birthplace of the apple. And it's here, in the wild apple forests, that you still find varieties of all shapes, all sizes, and all colours, like this red-fleshed one. The trouble is, they taste awful. The colour is anthocyanin. It's a powerful antioxidant and an important part of a healthy diet. So if we want to breed a new fruit with good taste and high anthocyanin, we need to know what's going on at the gene level. We made two discoveries. We found the gene that controls anthocyanin. It's a transcription factor called MIB10. When it's transcribed and made into protein, it binds and switches on all the genes that make anthocyanin. When we looked at the gene structure, we saw an area where its protein binds its own DNA. It switches itself on. In red-fleshed apples, this area is mutated, so it can bind six times as much protein. This means that the gene is driven harder, and so it makes all those other anthocyanin genes work harder, so you get more colour. So now we know the mechanism for the control of colour in apple. And this means that we can predict which seedlings will go on to produce red flesh fruit way before they do, so we can accelerate the breeding process. And we can help to quickly bring valuable, sustainable traits from wild varieties into new high quality fruit. In the future, we'll have the opportunity to eat fruit that not only looks and tastes good, but has nutrition and health benefits far beyond today's varieties. Birthplace of the apple.